Shalom, brother and sister truth seekers. The time has come. The Creator's holy days are upon us, and I am a firm believer in, uh, in this instruction in Leviticus 23, 4, to proclaim the holy times in their seasons. So, to the best of my current understanding and love and humility, I'm going to share my understanding of the creator's times and uh you know it's just to give you a a brief history of my understanding uh i grew up in you know a non-denominational christian household and kind of went to college and went in the wrong direction a little bit there and it, it's just amazing the creator had mercy and grace to pull not let go of me and allow me to to wake up to his truths and start down this this path and uh you know i, I just want to say the biggest thing that changed me at that time was being in his word you know getting through the word for the first time in my life uh, i always thought i had i had read the bible but never that didn't really actually ever do that and so just going through the bible for the first time it was uh amazing i used an audio bible and it, i just went through it and through it and through it i'd finish and i played again and again and again so and i believe the creator does speak to us through his word like it's you know it's powerful and uh, there's a verse that says his word will will not return void and and so i believe when we make any amount of time to get into the word it it will accomplish the purpose it's meant to accomplish and convict our hearts of the truth. So anyway, um, you know, I woke up and uh, started getting into some of these truths and, and really the, the one that got me on the holy days initially was uh, the three days and three nights and realizing for like, you know, modern Christianity and, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it? Uh, I don't even know what they call it. Good Friday to Easter Sunday. Like you, you can't get three days and three nights between those. So it just started making me aware that there were these holy times and you know, it, uh, I began to search for the truth and I, I stumbled upon one nineteen ministries initially and was on their calendar for a while. And I guess it was around the year 2015 where there were a lot of prophetic events that people were predicting and nothing seemed to really happen. And uh, it was right after that. It was just like, man, how like it almost even seems like, you know, Pentecostal churches and just mainstream Christianity churches were jumping on the bandwagon for these holy days. And it was like, you know, so much hype over something going to happen and then nothing happened. And it was uh, it was right after that that I started to realize there were so many different calendars out there. Like I think I realized that uh, uh, Steve had split off from 119 Ministry and had his own calendar understanding, and I realized Zach Bauer was on a different calendar, and it was just all of a sudden it was like, oh my goodness, I didn't even realize all of them. But it makes sense now. Like it, we're not going to be able to understand prophecy. That's probably why we're not understanding prophecy is because we, we don't understand his times. And so uh, his time pieces, really. And so, I mean, I just began to search uh, and I really didn't want anything to do with tradition. I, I wanted to try and find something that was written like i didn't i didn't want i, I wanted to make sure it was i try to find something that was written was was the main thing and um i i just you know i just kept listening to my bible over and over again and the, the i guess the the key the foundation of my understanding of the creator's times is without a doubt genesis 1 14. like this is completely uh the foundation of my understanding for uh let them be for signs for seasons for days and for years so we're here at the beginning of a year and so like i need to see a luminary sign that is directly connected with the start of the year like it i just it's not my understanding current understanding that we need to be taking any steps away from the signs like if there's luminary signs like time 
our creator's times need to be associated with those signs like the lights in the heavens are his timepieces and they are exact i i believe that like i can't believe that like if if people are going to try and say we can't rely on the movements of those luminaries in the heavens i think we're hopelessly lost <laughs> like to understand our creator's times and so i can't believe he would do that to his children so i i think he reveals his truths in his perfect timing and uh you know it's been an interesting journey learning and experimenting getting sundials out and, and just learning about the the movements of the heavenly luminaries but uh, to be quite honest, I don't feel I'm totally there yet. Like I, I feel like I, I, I feel in my heart that there is more to understand. So again, I'm just presenting to the best of my understanding now. But deep down, I, I feel like there's there's still a little more to understand. We're getting really close to understanding. I think a, a lot of it. But um, yeah. So anyway, yeah. No intercalation. Um, you know, it was interesting this year being a leap year, you, you might, um, you know, it, it begs the question, well, well, if you don't believe in interrelation, what, what do you do about leap years? And I, I just made a video on my YouTube channel talking about leap years. Uh, I might get into that briefly a little later in the video, but I encourage you to check that out if you have any, any curiosity about that. But in a nutshell, I, I don't believe we need to make any calculations or adjustments for, for, the, the 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 creator's leap year i'm going to call it like i think the creator's leap year just totally happens naturally due to the cycle of the the sun that he programmed and different people on earth are going to see uh the need to uh to adjust one day uh every so many years either four or five years but it, it's going to happen naturally and it's going to be tied to the luminary cycle particularly the sun uh, just the completion of the sun, watching for the sign, the completion of that circuit, and it, it just happens naturally. The interesting thing about the creator's design is it, it seems to happen for, for different people on Earth at different times, not like the way the Gregorian calendar works, where everyone on Earth sees it at the same time. Uh, but everyone on Earth is still, they're still seeing the holy times of the creator within the same 24-hour cycle. It's just... Um, just the way he designed the sun, people are kind of ahead or behind, depending on where they are, with respect to the creator's true international dateline. Um, you know, man, that man-made international dateline out in the Pacific Ocean is false, but there is a true international dateline, and I believe it moves every year. And uh, so I, I, I encourage you, if you have any curiosity about that, check out uh, some of the recent videos I did on the creator's international dateline. Uh, but anyway, so I mean, no, but, but no intercalation, like I don't believe in like, I, I just, it's not my understanding that we need to be jumping around and, uh, you know, if we see the luminary sign on a certain day, we should be counting forward or backwards to figure out what the first day of the year is. Um, but anyway, so, um, yeah, luminary signs are absolutely essential. So, but unfortunately, that is almost where it seems uh things end for, for like it there's no in the scriptures there don't seem to be any clear instructions on uh, how the time pieces work or even for sure what what the what the increments of time are and uh you know uh there's a there's a common mistranslation out there in the bible that you see it all the time it says in uh, what is it? Uh, in the new moons, in the new moons, new moons, new moons. And, uh, but the thing is, that is a horrible, uh, bi horribly biased mistranslation. Uh, and it, it should be saying in the new month. And, and if you're, you're, you've made it this far and you haven't realized that there's a, there's a biased mistranslation there, then, then that should be, a a big thing for you to look into. Uh, it should always be a yellow flag when we we see something in the translation that actually isn't uh, isn't correct. And uh, there there's just a different word in Hebrew for moon and a different word for month. And and the one that you see used in that phrase is um, is the one for month. 
So, uh, you know, right off the bat, there's a huge tra uh, bias towards uh, lunar months. And, I mean, to be honest, uh, I do want to understand the moon more. I, it, I don't, my current understanding of the Creator's Times doesn't actually have much to do with the moon. And, to be honest, that does bother me. Uh, I, I, I want to know the purpose of the moon. I, I want to understand if it, if it has a role. What is that role? I don't know if it has something to do with Jubilee years or Shemitah cycles or it's just a, a, a secondary witness every so many years. I, I just, I don't, I don't feel comfortable that the moon, it just something, something just doesn't seem right that it, it has nothing to do to, to help us understand the greater signs. But for now, at this moment, uh, it's just, it's just, doesn't doesn't help too much uh, for my current understanding but i i do plan to look into it more uh but anyway so yeah there's in in the scriptures there just unfortunately isn't a whole lot of instruction that talk about like what is the monthly time piece and uh yeah how do these time pieces work and and i wanted to mention one more thing like yes uh you know i my understanding is that time should be connected to the movements of the heavenly luminaries. Uh, but for the Sabbath day cycle, like I know there's a lot of discussion about that lately, it seems. And my understanding is that it, it, you know, I, the solar cycle being what it is three, 365.2 days. Like that's an odd number of days. And so, you know, every people have like lunar Sabbaths, solar Sabbaths, and it's just, it's my, and, and I mean that they have solar Sabbaths, I'm guessing, because they're trying to tie concepts of time to this verse. And, you know, I used to just say it so heavily, like I believe that uh, every single, anything that has to do with time, it has to, it has to be backed up by a luminary sign. But I need to take that back because, um, you know, the Pentecost, for example, it's um, it's not necessarily tied to a luminary sign. Like there are specific instructions given to to count to Pentecost, and uh, so uh, the same. I kind of see the same thing for the Sabbath right now. Like it. It just looks like with the solar cycle being what it is, 365.2 days, like it, that solar cycle just isn't, there's going to be an extra day so many years. And like, if you're looking at a solar Sabbath, uh, counting a certain number of days from, from the, uh, the beginning or, or the end of the solar cycle, you're going to end up needing to add in a day between the uh, Sabbaths uh, on every so many years, uh, you're going to need to add in at least one day every year, I believe, but potentially even two days some years if you're experiencing that leap year where there's actually 360 uh, six days between your equinox events. So, I mean, that really, um, I haven't found peace about that. Like, it seems like there are so many simple instructions in the scriptures that say six days you know, and then on the seventh you rest, and, and that's it. Like, I don't see, sort of like in, in Genesis 114 here, I don't see Genesis 114 saying, look for Abib. I don't see it saying, oh, and by the way, uh, count three days, count four days. Like, there aren't any extra rules that I see in the instructions here. Um, and so likewise for the Sabbath, too. Like, I see so many times in the scriptures where it, it says work six days, rest the seventh day. And I think that's a special, I mean, I know that the scriptures talk about it as a special token and a sign uh, in and of itself uh, and a testimony of the creation event. And, and it just doesn't, unfor uh, I mean, it doesn't make sense to me that we can just uh, throw in an extra day or two on some years and break that cycle just to try and make it match up with a luminary sign. Uh, like it just, uh, I, I just can't imagine there being more than seven days between Sabbaths because of all those simple instructions. So I did want to mention that it's just, um, that's a, uh, that's something I, I see as separate, and I mean, like I said, even even Pentecost, like I don't, I'm not aware that there's an actual luminary sign. So, like I, I definitely, where there are instructions to count, I think we should be counting, 
but otherwise I definitely like to see a luminary sign confirming things like the first day of the year or the first day of the month. Um, so anyway, let's, so now <clears throat> again, back to 2015, I couldn't, uh, it was just amazing starting to realize how many different calendars there were. And so the, the hunt began to try and find, well, try and understand it all. And, uh, you know, looking for luminary sign or, or like this being the foundation, something to do with the lights. I, I'm not interested in tradition or oral written tradition, oral tradition, logic. Like I want to try and find something that was written. And so I just was prayerful about it. And I was continuing to listen to my Bible a lot. Uh, you know, I was listening to my audio Bible. I had a long commute to work back in those days. And, uh, I just got through a lot of the Bible every day and I would hear references to other books. And, uh, you know, it actually it was years before a couple, at least two or three years before the, um, this calendar stuff began. Uh, I realized there were other books being mentioned in the scriptures, like mentioned by name, like the book of Jasher and, uh, like just a whole bunch of other books. And, um, I realized, uh, you know, that in the book of Jude, it was quoting the book of Enoch. And, uh, you know, it was just, uh, I was just hungry for, for truth. Like, I wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything back in those days. And so I, I started to realize there were these other books mentioned. And then I realized, you know, there are, there are many, many, many books out there. And, uh, I, at some point I decided to start testing a few of them, uh, testing all things hold fast that which is true the good like throw away that which is bad and it's like you know i i start going through things like the dead sea scrolls and enoch and some of these other books and i need to say right off the bat i have i do have very big concerns about a lot of the stuff that's being called zadok and a lot of the zadok calendars i mean there are some people who think they've made sense of it but from the vast majority that I've seen, it looks like a lot of those Zadok calendars are detaching themselves from the witness of the heavenly luminaries, unfortunately, uh, in favor of number cycles that are just free floating throughout the year. And, uh, you know, so I, I the, the main thing is I, I did start to look into Enoch and right off the bat, I want to definitely clarify, like, there's unfortunately a big misconception, I think. And, and like us, like people saying a lot of these Zadok dead sea scroll Qumran calendars are saying Enoch, Enoch, Enoch. But from what I can see, when I read in Enoch, it's just not in harmony with, like I said, the vast majority of, of what I see coming out of the dead sea scrolls. And like I saw the leaven in the dead sea scrolls, like, you know, you got to look at, look at the community rules of this community. And, like they're saying, uh, I, I forgot what it is, but stuff like love your neighbor, hate your, hate your enemy. Like, I mean, it, it's, it's, and Yeshua said the opposite. Like there's, there's just stuff in there that Yeshua debunked verbatim. And so, uh, I'm, I'm just very cautious of the Dead Sea Scrolls. I, I started a playlist years ago called testing the Dead Sea Scrolls and I was getting into some of it then, uh, but then life got busy and I haven't really been able to continue it. But all that to say, I know some people can be very concerned when they hear Enoch, but I think I would pray that you just bear with, uh, bear with me <laughs> and just continue to listen. I mean, and, and test all things. And, and if, if it doesn't, if you come across something that doesn't line up with scripture or, or reality or is just out in left field, then, then throw it away. But from what I've seen, uh, I think there's a lot that clouds, uh, there are a lot of clouds hanging over Enoch because of misunderstandings or just, just thinking things are in harmony. They're saying they're in harmony with Enoch, but really they're not. And I, I don't see them being in harmony with Enoch. But anyway, it, at some point, I got convicted that I wanted to listen to Enoch because, I mean, if it really was Enoch, uh, you know, it's quoted in Jude. He was like one of those special people that was so righteous that like the creator took him like, you know, one of the two people on earth that didn't have to die. 
so I, at some point I just decided, and I do realize there's like also the bad Enoch who was the son of Cain or what grandson or whatever on that side. It's kind of really weird how the first few grandsons on both sides of that family tree had the same names and Enoch was one of them. But, uh, you know, the, the quote, I, I just at one point decided to test Enoch and when I opened it and I started reading it and listening to it, you know, I found right away the quote that is quoted in the book of Jude. And it was like, Oh, okay, there's something here. And so I continue to look at it and, and I will say, I don't know if I, I have full, I, I, I don't put, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to say like the whole book of Enoch is good. Like, I think potentially there's some stuff in there that, um, it just hasn't convicted me as being 100% truth. Uh, I mean, and you know, 119 Ministries, I think, did a very big video on the Book of Enoch where they tore it to shreds. But even them, even 119 Ministries in their video, uh, had one part in their video where they admitted and they said, well, yeah, we think, you know, most of Enoch is probably made up or added to by multiple authors and blah, 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 except possibly with the exception of the luminary chapters. They said that. So, and I would agree with that. <clears throat> like, and I'm, and I'm willing that even the luminary chapters are an error uh, or, or there's something there that needs to be cut away. But you know, I, I do think there's there's some things there that I've actually been able to test out and see are holding true today and have helped me to understand the creator's times, uh, what, how I understand them today. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, the, I tested the Book of Enoch like two or three years before 2015 because I was just curious to hear what was going on in Enoch because it was mentioned in the Bible. And when I heard uh Enoch for the first time uh I got to the luminary chapters and back then I didn't really care about the I didn't have a deep understanding of of much truth at that point like I was just following 119 ministries interpretation of the calendar and it's like all of a sudden it started talking about all these luminaries and the stars and the moon and how they move through the heavens and it was just like oh that's interesting uh that means nothing to me right now, but wow, somebody really went through a lot of detail to talk about how these lights are moving in the heavens. And, you know, that was, that was, and I just got through the chapters and I was like, oh, finally, well, let's get on with the rest of Enoch now. And, th and that was it. And it kind of laid dormant for two to three years until 2015 when I realized there were all these different calendars out there and I began to. I didn't want tradition. I wanted to try and find something that was written, something that explained what these lights in the heavens are doing. And, and it was at that time that I remembered Enoch, and I remembered that the, there were luminary chapters that actually talked about the movements of the, uh, the luminaries. And so um, I went back, and I looked, and I reread, and I looked deeper, and uh, you know, it was around that time you had folks like um, Jerry Morris and uh, Juan Carlos were making claims that the solar cycle was still 364 days, and there was just a lot going on. It was like, whoa. And like when I read Enoch again, like one of the first things you see in the, in the beginning of Enoch is it says there are months, like I'm going to, he's going to talk you through the luminary cycles and their months. And it used months, plural, which meant there were months for the stars. There were months for the moon. There were months for the sun, solar months, stellar months, lunar months. And, um, yeah, so I just, um, I had, it just seemed like things were exploding around that time. Claims were being made and I had to dig in and start testing things for myself and that's what kind of when the sundial journey began like people making these claims of 364 days it was like whoa that can't possibly be and it took a long time to work through and prove these things like i can't just debunk someone claiming that <clears throat> like it takes like a year or two or three of sundial data to finally see that that's not true and um so just to kind of speed up like I realized that Enoch talked about solar months. So solar months being 30 day months. And, um, 
that just seemed to potentially match with some of the prophetic things that we read in Revelation and Daniel where it's talking about 30-day months. And, like, I just realized the, the lunar months, like that mistranslation in the King James where it said lunar, like, new moons, new moons, it's just not true. And you look at the, the, the cycle and the data for the lunar months, and it's, like, some really odd decimal, like, crazy number of days, like 28, 29. Uh, it's just really strange. And uh, so I was just really excited to see, like, Enoch talked about 30-day months, solar months, and that seemed to be a good match for some of those prophetic um, prophetic timelines mentioned in Revelation and Daniel. Like, it, the, the, when you read those increments of time, they seem to be thirty divisible by 30. Um, and so, you know, that was interesting, and, you know, just... The, in addition to the 30-day months, Enoch also talks about one extra seasonal day at the end of each season. Um, but there's also a verse that talks about how you're supposed to, like, disregard those days in the counting of the year. Like, and and so potentially it's just 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. I mean, but it, so I, I don't know. I mean, there's more to look into there. Uh, I mean, there, there's potential for the, these 30 day months to match what, uh, what the timelines are talking about in Revelation, but it, it's kind of weird with that extra one day. Um, but the thing is, uh, and I do recommend, um, you know, I think Covenant Calendar has, uh, done a really good job. I actually need to refresh my memory. Like they, they they also believe in 30 day months i believe but they've like proved that to themselves through looking at the scriptures and uh i need to actually take a closer look to see how they were uh coming up with those and because i mean so but that understanding just seems to work nice with some of those prophetic timelines mentioned in revelation and whatnot but anyway so um Enoch, yeah, I just it, so 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 that's the basis of my understanding is it's it's a solar year, it's solar months, it's solar seasons. They all start on the like they all fit inside each other like fingers of a glove perfectly. Like the first day of the solar year is the first day of the season of spring, the solar season of spring, and it's also the first day of the first solar month. And uh, you know the solar months. The way Enoch described it, they're, you know, they're they're based on the position of the sun in the heavens, and uh, you know, it's essentially Enoch talks pretty clearly about the day of equal light and darkness, and uh, he describes the sun as being, you know, it, it kind of bouncing between the um, the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn, like how modern science would describe it today. Like he describes in long, meticulous detail. How the sun is slowly shifting position over the course of the year to give us the seasons and uh, <clears throat> so um, one other important thing I should mention right off the bat is you know there was um, in the past two or three years one of the big revelations that occurred to me after after testing with sundials and, and proving to myself that the solar cycle was not 364 days uh, you know, just continuing to, to understand things, a new revelation and a new realization came to me, and that is Enoch did not describe the year as only being 364 days. He actually described the year as, um, where is it? <clears throat> Keyword is overplus. And it, it this is actually um, page 107. If you're interested in looking at Enoch, I recommend uh, I recommend this translation. It's by uh, James Charlesworth, but he he actually um, oops. he actually like went to extensive efforts to like flag textual variants, uh, so you can you can see what the original source texts, what the words were, if they, if there was a, a disagreement or a variant between the words, it's kind of like King James, but just a very diligent, you can see some things are going on uh, in the original translation. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so let's see the, so the thing is, um, and he says it clearly, I have a couple different translations of this. I think he says it more clearly. It's more. E it's easier to see in uh, 
in this verse here, yeah. So here's that word, overplus of the sun. So, I mean, in addition to the 364 days that he talks about, it, he's saying there's an overplus, and he says of uh, in five years, six days, or wait, wait, in six years, five days. And I want to jump back to this, this translation to look at it. So the gain of the sun and the stars is six days in five years. And remember, just be cautious of punctuation, like that's not something that was in the original source text. So without getting too... Sorry about that. Uh, free, free video, uh, recording software. Anyway, so the, um, yeah, I have a video that, uh, talks through this in depth. I think it's called, uh, uh, Enoch did not say there were 364 days in a year. Uh, but anyway, yeah, he does say there's, there's an overplus and he says it works out to be six days in five years without getting into things, kind of disregard the, uh, the groupings that seem to be implied by punctuation and just, just read read it as it is here uh, and check out that video if you have any questions. But what I'm going to propose to you is that Enoch is saying that in six, uh, what does he say? In five years, there's six days. So that works out to 1.2 extra days every year. That means in, in the year that Enoch was describing, there were 364 days plus this 1.2 days every year, which is 365 Point two, which is extremely close to what modern science says. And uh, I think there's more to look into there for sure. Like, I think definitely, like, the difference between what modern science is claiming, like, it's an extra point zero four, it's very close. And I wouldn't be surprised if modern science just didn't have it quite right. Uh, but anyway, so that really, that helped my understanding and confidence in this tremendously. Like, all of a sudden it was like, oh, okay, so I mean, this, this glaring glitch of people believing Enoch said there were 364 days in the year. That's not true. Enoch here is actually saying there is an overplus of six days in five years, or 1.2 days every year. And uh, and so it, it works, it, it seems to work out. That was a, a big, big, big step in confidence there. Um, and I just want to mention, since we're here, uh, you know, Enoch didn't he didn't even say, um, he, you got to be careful about where he said 364 days because he also said 364 stations. And so those are positions of the sun. Uh, you know, as we, we see the seasons, the sun is obviously moving east to west over the course of the day, but it's also shifting slightly north and slightly south. Every day it's jumping on a new track. And uh, I recommend you check out, uh, ooh, I think the, the video I did, uh, Tips for Sundials, uh, recently, but it talks about these, uh, these tracks of the heavens, and uh, you can just see them, like the celestial equator is a straight line that runs right through the middle, and, um, and uh, you know, Enoch describes that one as, as where the sun begins the year, the equal day in darkness, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, you can see, the if you ever, like, Google uh, star trails, you can see the circle of the stars, and you can see these these curved paths that the sun is traveling over the course of the year. And it's just like a, a record or a DVD, like the sun is kind of skipping tracks. Every, every day it's in a different station, as Enoch calls it. And so Enoch said, it's not so much that he said 364, like we, as I said, we, we went up, uh, up above there. He, he actually said there was an overplus of days, uh, but, but it's positions. There are 364 positions that the sun will, will ride in, uh, over the course of a year. Like as it's moving a little bit North and a little bit South each day, depending on what season you're in, like these are the stations that the, the sun is in. So anyway, um, yeah, I just want to say the other big, um, the other big, big piece that kind of was a revelation to me lately, uh, that kind of made everything make sense, almost everything makes sense, like certainly the 364 and the 365.2, like that makes sense now, but like as far as the equinox goes, like some of you may be familiar with, with my work with sundials and just trying to coordinate, you know, sundial efforts and data around the world and talking about the creator's moving international date line, like 
that came from realizing that, like <clears throat> what what Enoch is describing here like he, he the 364 days versus 365 days there's an overplus and just the the way that the creator designed it like there is truly it, it takes 365.2 days for everyone on earth to see the sun ride in the 364 different tracks of heaven. And, like, if you pay attention for a minute, you'll realize that there are always two Gregorian dates running simultaneously. Always. And, and this is not saying that there's, like, some hidden day that we're missing. Like, it's all there right in front of us. Uh, it was, I mean... <laughs> I didn't see it at first for years, but I mean, now I can, I can, it's starting to make more sense and I can see it. Like, you know, early on people were looking at spreadsheets, trying to add them up and say, look here at 364 days. And then that we were just miscounting. We were adding wrong, count them in Excel, but no, I mean, there, there's actually 365.2, but it takes that many days. It takes that much clock time to tick in order for everyone to see the sun in uh, in the 364 positions and it, it just it just has to do with um you know where 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 the solar cycle begins and ends and um let me see if i can uh might have a graphic that helps to show that a little bit but i mean you know people with the we're seeing the equinox event uh in in the spring of 2013 we thought the first people to see the straight line, the, the time when the sun is cr it's cutting that perfect east-west circuit across the heavens. It's riding the celestial equator, essentially. But the first people to see it seemed to be right around uh, the beginning of central United States. And then in the fall, the Creator's international dateline progressed to the west coast of the United States. And it's it's progressing like this because the solar cycle is an odd number of days like it takes 365 days you go round and round and round and you get to here back where the first person saw the straight line but then there's an extra point two days where the sun continues to move out to the west to finish its cycle and then the person here sees the straight line because the the cycle finished and that just kind of uh, progresses in the creator's international date line moves and so, um, yeah, that was just, uh, it's, it's just interesting to, to just to realize, uh, you know, what the Gregorian dates is confusing people are, but there's always, there's always two different Gregorian dates running at the same time. Uh, but yeah, 365.2 days, uh, 364 different positions of the sun. But anyway, this, the big, the big other piece that occurred to me lately was, uh, was this verse. Like it, it, you know, I, I, my head, <clears throat> my head was in a rut thinking about the 364 days. And I was just like, you know, so when are we going to see the day of equal light and darkness? And, uh, you know, is it at the beginning of the cycle or is that the end of the cycle? And, uh, when you read the beginning of, uh, Enoch's description of the sun moving through the heavens, it essentially describes the sun near the celestial equator, but it, it says uh, it starts in the fourth portal. So there are six portals of heaven. Portals three and four are right next to each other, and right between portals three and four is the middle line of heaven, the celestial equator. And so this is describing in the beginning that the sun is already rising out of the fourth portal. This is how the start of the sun cycle is described. It's, it's already in the fourth portal and it's moving. So... Here at the beginning of the description of the sun, I don't see him saying, okay, guys, look like the sun is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's equal light and darkness right here. Like, I'm not seeing that here. But when you get to the end of his long, meticulous description of the solar year, right at the end, he says, he's talking about uh, now the 364th day, if you count all this. I think he summarizes it here. But... It's the 364th day, and he says, on that day, on the 364th day, he says, the night decreases and amounts to nine parts. And so, uh, again, just my, 
well, not again, but to clarify how this makes sense to me, my current understanding is that the days begin in the morning. And so when he says on that day, on the 364th day, the night is decreasing to nine parts. So it's nine parts, uh, nine parts darkness and nine parts light. Um, he's saying the night decreased to nine parts. So in this day cycle, the day occurred, and it's only in the night that the night decreases to nine parts, like, like you said at first. And so then it makes sense that the day following is the 300, like the light portion following the night of the 364th day is, is the light portion of the 365th day. And that's the day that corresponds to the nine parts of darkness. And that's the day we see the straight line phenomenon with the sundials. And um, it, to me, it makes perfect sense. Uh, like it, it just makes perfect sense. Like it's uh, what Enoch is describing here is very, 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 very close to what modern science is describing. And like I said, like it's 365.2 days versus 365.24 days. Like it's 0 0.04 difference. Like I, I've got a feeling some modern science might just be off, but, uh, it's very, very, very close. And it, it makes sense, like this straight line phenomenon we see with sundials is happening on the last day of the year. It happens on the 364th day of the solar year, and it ends the solar cycle. And then the next morning is the start of the new solar year. So, <clears throat> all that to say, I guess uh, that is essentially what is behind what you see here. So there were, there were truth seekers this year, um, all around the world. We had 42 of them. Actually, I think more, uh, you know, af after the fact, more and more, I, I hear more and more data coming in. Uh, we try and process this as quickly as possible, but not everyone gets their data in, uh, uh, as soon as, as we would like, but, uh, Anyway, it was uh, tremendous, uh, amazing to see so many people doing it this year. And uh, so for me in West Virginia, um, my understand like I was seeing, I was seeing the straight line on the 19th of March. Uh, where am I? <clears throat> I'm here. So in West Virginia, I was seeing the straight line on the 19th. And so that was the day the sun was rising east and setting west. And, and, and lately I did find a couple textbooks that are confirming that these are the three patterns you'll see over the course of the year. You're going to see the sun like uh, creating kind of a smiley face. And then one day you will see this straight line phenomenon where it's riding the celestial equator. And then the next day you're going to see a flipped curve. Uh, if you're not familiar with sundials, please check out some of my videos on sundials or feel free to comment or ask questions. But anyway, I saw the straight line on the 19th, sun rising due east, setting due west. And um, <clears throat> that would mean the, the solar cycle, uh, it ended for me on the 19th. So the first day of spring for me, the first day of the first solar month, the first day of the, of the new solar year, the first day of spring was uh the 20th however the question is where is the creator's true international date line where did time begin and uh you know is everyone on earth going to have their first day on the uh the 20th well unfortunately not because this man-made international date line here once the sun continues to progress west so i think it was it was almost unanimous that everyone in the United States saw the straight line on the 19th. There was one major outlier, and I, I just recommend you check out the Sundial Summary video if you want more information on that. But it seemed like the majority were seeing the straight line on the 19th. So, so the sun's cutting that straight path across the United States. But as soon as it crosses over this man-made international date line, the date changes to the 20th. It's still the same 24-hour cycle that everyone's seeing it, but it's just people in Australia were, were, were getting their first day of the year on the 21st. So if I go down to uh, Alan in Australia, like he saw the straight line on the Gregorian 20th. So it, it was still right after we saw it, but because the sun crossed the international date line, he's seeing it on the 20th. So his first day of spring is the 21st. 
still within the same 24 hour cycle as all of us. But so, so then the question is what about everyone else between here? And unfortunately there wasn't, um, it, there were no solid witnesses that I saw this year for sundial data in this zone. So it's a tough call. Uh, from past years, uh, past two Equinox uh, events, the data collected, it seems like the Creators International Dateline was going to land right here in Split Australia. And I think there is a strong case for that. Again, I recommend you you check out the, the, the Sundial summary video I put together that discusses all that. But can't say 100% absolutely, so unfortunately I, I can't tell you for sure what's going to happen in here. If you have any questions please feel free to reach out um, and we can we can talk through this. But um, it probably, unfortunately, I mean, we, we did have some good data coming from France that I think helped clarify a little bit, but unfortunately France isn't, uh, isn't as far west as or east as a lot of the other sundialers were in Africa this year. So it didn't really help to clarify too much of what was going on in Africa. But... I think we can confirm uh, for the upcoming fall equinox, if we see where the Creators International Dateline is, we'll be able to see, was it somewhere in the Indian Ocean or was it somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean? And that will be kind of a secondary uh, witness or confirmation of, um, you know, what it was actually for this spring. So anyway, um, yeah, all this is, this is based the first day of spring. It, this is for my location, so definitely if you're in Australia or west of Australia, you might be a date difference, depending. Um, yeah, just actually, I mean, if the Creators International Dateline landed in Australia, then you might actually be on the same date as me, but it, it's a tough call this year. Uh, I recommend you look at everyone's data and make the best decision you can for yourself. If you if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out, and I'd I'd love to uh, talk you through, help you understand the data, and um, maybe give you my 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 assessment on a personal level. But um, <clears throat> so all this is is I've color coded this. Uh, these are the dates that I I checked. Um, I believe these are correct, um, but. Uh, uh, they're just color coded and they're flagged out here. So the first day of the first year is this one in green. It's the 20th for me. And then uh, you just start counting from there. And these holy days are based off of, again, the 30 day solar months. So that doesn't really affect anything in here. Uh, but then we get to um, we get to the fall holy days. And uh, you can see these dates here. That's my current understanding. But to be honest, um, this is not a part that I feel tremendous peace about. This is a part that I feel there's still something to learn, and I'm, I'm guessing, <laughs> I'm anticipating that there's going to be a lot more study before the fall this year, and a lot more praying, and you know, a lot more diligent truth-seeking sundials and everything else. Because the crazy thing that seems to be happening, and I. It just doesn't make sense to me because I, I think I have more studying to do. But um, this is the one piece of Enoch that doesn't make sense to me. And as I say that, I want to say, you know, there were other major pieces of Enoch that didn't make sense to me in the past. Like the whole 364 day, it didn't make sense for a long time. And even the day of equal light and darkness didn't make sense until a couple of years later. But like the creator has been revealing this piece by piece in his perfect timing and it it makes perfect sense those pieces do like i have no problem with a 365.2 ish day a year versus what you know the misconception about 364 days talked about in enoch but um this part is uh definitely something weird going on and the potential is uh something doesn't something isn't isn't right and maybe Enoch is wrong or maybe we're misunderstanding Enoch maybe there you know need to dig into the translation verify consistency and uh, accuracy of the translation it's on my to-do list to do that but from what I'm seeing you know Enoch describes the 30-day solar months as I said and then he describes um, those extra seasonal days at the end of a block of three solar months so each season is 91 days so the 
the this this current layout here is based off of that straight up count. It's 30 day solar months and then um, and then the uh, the seasonal days at the end. So 91 days per season. So times two gives you half of the solar year right here, 182 days. So then the nice, in theory, the nice thing about it is the very next day is in theory supposed to be the first day of the second half of the solar year or the first day of the seventh solar month or the first day of uh, the solar season of autumn. All three of those coincide and it just seems so beautiful and so perfect. And that's the way Enoch describes it. He describes the sun as returning to a specific station in heaven and, um, and I mean, that, that's what Enoch describes. He describes the sun as being in a specific station of heaven. And so the, the, the problem is, though, it doesn't seem like people are seeing the straight line to confirm that the sun has returned to the celestial equator. It doesn't seem that people are seeing that on the 18th. It seems like they're seeing it, and we did this last year. Like, we had a fair amount of truth seekers collecting data last fall. And, uh, you know, I don't think it was being seen until, like, the, the 22nd or the 23rd. Like, it's just way out here. <laughs> way beyond what we would have expected looking at Enoch. And so that doesn't make any sense to me. <clears throat> and it does make me consider wanting, wanting to throw Enoch completely out the window. <laughs> to be honest, I'm, I'm not quite there yet, but I'm, I'm close. And, and to be honest, I'm torn between whether I should stick to a count or whether, you know, I should, I should make it line up with when the straight line is seen. Uh, it's, it's just something I need to continue to pray about. And I know there's, there's been some discussion about, uh, but you need to be fully aware of that and, uh, you need to be testing all things for yourself. But like, you know, I mean, other calendars are based off accounts too, like the covenant calendar. They just count 30 days, boom, 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 boom. And so, <laughs> so I mean, you know, the, this is counting too, but I hate it. I don't like it. I don't like to just count. Like I said, I, I like to see a luminary sign helping us to understand the times. Like I don't, I just don't feel comfortable about counting half a year and just continuing to count to holy days. Like, yes, we're supposed to count to Pentecost. And uh, I mean, I guess if we're sure, like if we're, we have confidence in what our count is, like counting 30 days or counting per Enoch, 30 days plus the extra seasonal day. They're both kind of the same thing, but I don't feel warm and fuzzy about either of those. Like I would love to see a luminary sign confirm things. So on that note, I do want to mention, I did do one other type of test like with sundials and looking at the sun to see if the sun was returning to the same station or position in heaven. Because I know the straight line phenomenon, it's an awesome phenomenon, but if you read Enoch, what Enoch described was the sun was returning to a, a specific location in heaven. And <clears throat> Enoch described... Um, a, a, it was just a specific location in heaven. It was a track of a uh, circuit of heaven. And so the, the experiment that I performed, because I realized, um, I realized this was happening. Like the people like Jerry Morris and Juan Carlos were making the claim the solar cycle was 364 days. And so that year I jumped right into it and was trying to prove it. And it took years to, to figure out that it wasn't. But on my way... Like, I, they, they were doing their sundial thing that spring back in the day. So, I mean, I, I, I didn't really have a good equinox test until the following fall. But when I did, I noticed it was way late. And so I've had a question about the timing of a fall equinox since the beginning. And it's something I've never felt comfortable with. And I've, I've always knew something seemed off. But last year, last fall, it was really confirmed that something was off. And so, but, but anyway, like I, I thought something was off right off the bat, uh, years ago. And so I began to consider, I be, I began to really question the straight line method and wonder, well, is there another way to test it where the sun is located in the heavens? Like, can we actually see, is it returning to the same position, the same station that Enoch described? 
And so what I ended up doing uh, was I, I had an idea. I wanted to find the celestial equator. And I, it, it, long story short, check out this video on my YouTube channel. It explains what I saw. But I s did see with this alternative method of taking pictures of the stars and taking pictures of the sun. And I, I had a location of where the sun was on uh, in the spring back in 2020. You see, uh, anyway, check out this video because I actually have a picture of where the sun was. But then you can see I also was looking, I was comparing to that September. And I could see that the sun was returning to the celestial equator, which is right around, above Orion's belt. I could see it was returning to the celestial equator in the proper count, like on, on the 19th. Like, and that's, that's, that's ballpark of where we would expect to see it, according to Enoch. But we're not seeing the straight line until several days later, which I don't understand. But when I did this method and I took pictures, I did see the sun returning to the celestial equator like this. Unfortunately, this picture, you'll have to watch the video. Oh, wait, there. Here's a here's a picture that shows the sun. So this, no, no, this was September. So if you watch the video, I actually have pictures of where the sun was in March. Like I have an arrow pointing to where it was. But if you watch the video, it actually shows where the sun was. And the sun was being bisected by the celestial equator. Looked like it does right there, except in March. And so in September, I was seeing the sun return to this line. And then if you look at the 20th, this is from the 20th, it's already past the celestial equator. Like in it, and I, I think if you look at the video, like I might have had one more picture of, of much later. And it, I mean, it, it's just obvious that it's getting away from the celestial equator by the 22nd and the 23rd when the straight line is seen again in the fall. So I, I don't know what's going on with that. It doesn't make sense that it's not a symmetrical year with, with this straight line phenomenon. Uh, it's something I'm going to continue to look into, but the um when i did this method it did look like the sun was returning to the celestial equator the position that enoch described it the station of heaven so uh i don't i full disclosure that's what's going on there and uh you know this is this is an experiment i want to repeat to see like the the first year that i did this it was it was the first year that i did this and there were some things i'd like to do to improve it but you know this is this is already showing a pretty big progression away from the celestial equator just one day later uh so i don't think the errors could have been so significant that you know, it, it just made this totally not worth considering. But um, it, it, I do want to repeat the experiment someday just to make sure uh, and, and continue to study, dig into the translation, uh, verify uh, accuracy and consistency. It may eventually prove um, my understanding is totally faulty. Uh, <laughs> but um, that, it, it, you know, in that's that's my that's my current understanding to the best of my abilities um it looks like there's the potential that the counts we read in enoch are spot on and there's something weird going like everything makes sense to me i have complete peace about what enoch says except for what's going on here uh, and i i have a little bit of peace about it because of that second experiment i performed where it looked like the sun was returning to where it should have been for this so therefore i do have a luminary sign to confirm this uh you know based on the position of the sun but uh, i need to repeat the experiment and uh, i'm open-minded uh <clears throat> i just need to continue to to you know try and figure out what's going on maybe maybe there's something going on and we're misunderstanding the timing of something maybe there's a mystery i don't know maybe it's all wrong i don't know <laughs> but like i said unfortunately it, it almost seems like you, you just gotta pick like i said i i think the closest calendars that i uh kind of are, are close to my understanding definitely check out what the covenant calendar club has to say uh, right now we're kind of both in the same boat. They count 30 days. I count 30 days plus the extra one day for the seasonal day because I, I actually find writing to support that in Enoch. But like I said, I need to I need to study out what, what the Covenant Calendar Club says, how they proved it to themselves through the scriptures. Um, uh, 
But, uh, yeah, I think the other one that's pretty close is uh, what Nick Vanderlyn is telling people. Uh, I think that, that calendar is pretty close to, to my understanding. Um, but, yeah, this is, this is uh, again, just uh, just trying to be faithful. I, I, I don't think I've, I've got it all figured out yet. I think we're getting very, very close. But um, just trying to be faithful to the instruction I see to, um, to proclaim these times um, in their seasons. So, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, here it is proclaiming their seasons. So I'm doing that. I've done it to the best of my ability. That's my current understanding. Uh, you know, just do the best you can find peace, be diligent. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you've done diligently and, uh, you've done the best you can, uh, you know, it's between, ah, almost got it done before it cut me off. No, but I, I just wanted to end this by saying, uh, <clears throat> you know, do it, it's, it's amazing to me. Uh, you know, it, it, I just want to encourage you, uh, the, the answer can be found. Uh, I might not have it. Maybe someone else has it. Maybe I do have it. I mean, but I, I know we can get there. Somebody will like, we're promised if we seek, we will find. And I know if we're seeking our creator's truths in love with pure hearts, without any motivation behind it, other than we were trying to understand our creator's instructions so we can obey him and, and worship him in spirit and truth. I, I know he's he's going to honor wherever we're at with our current understanding. Like, it just seems so clear that he he, he reveals his truths in, in a progression. And, you know, if we do the best with what he's allowed us to understand and that what he's speaking to our hearts, then, then be at peace with that and uh, just do the best you can. Um, and, uh, yeah, but I, but I do believe we should don't, don't believe the lie of the devil, the lie of the lawless one, realize that his chief, one of his chief objectives, it says, is he would think to change times and laws. Like he is so he, like times and laws are the two categories and like all the laws, obviously lawlessness, legalism, all that garbage, uh, but times is the other pillar. Like that's the main thing he's after is, is to try and mess up the times. And so like, I just encourage you don't give up, do the best you can. And I know the creator is going to help us. He's going to honor if we're doing the best we can. And, and I know he's going to reveal his, all of it. He's going to lead us into all truth in his perfect timing. And just don't go for that lie of the lawless one where he says, oh, we'll never be able to figure out. Don't even try. It's not important. Blah, blah, blah. Like, I think it is important. And I think there's a special time of fellowship we can have with our creator in a special way. And so I just encourage you guys to keep looking into this. Uh, feel free to let me know your thoughts. Um, and shalom and may Abba bless you as you continually seek out his truths in love with a pure heart.